The tyres that you fit your bike can serve several different purposes and when choosing the right tyre for you, well, it can be incredibly difficult because after all, these tyres can drastically impact our cycling. It could be the difference between winning or losing or crashing or not crashing. So today I'm gonna to run through some of the key considerations you should take into account when choosing your next set of bike tyres. Now the tires that you put on your bike can be one of the most cost-effective upgrades you make to your bike. They're relatively inexpensive when you compare that to the cost of your bike and some of the other componentry that goes on your bike. Yeah, you can have a drastic impact on our comfort whilst riding, the grip and our handling, the speed, and also the amount of time that we might spend stood on the side of the road fixing punctures. So all of these factors need to come into play when we're choosing our tires, but unfortunately there is no one size fits all or one magic tire that hits all of those. Normally as you prioritize in one area, you will have to compromise in another. For instance, a softer, grippier tire may actually be more prone to puncture, but then the more puncture resistant tires are harder and actually probably will cost you more in terms of watts and be a slower tire. So I'm not necessarily going to be telling you which tire to buy today, but I'm gonna provide you with as much information as possible so you can make your own educated decision upon what you want to prioritize in. So first things first, we actually wanna find out what those priorities are for you, what you're looking for in the tire. Is it speed, is it comfort, is it grip, is it puncture resistance, etc., etc. This may also change as you go through the year. For instance, here in the UK at the moment, we're in the winter, and my priorities have definitely changed. I'm looking for a tire that is more puncture resistant and has more grip as we're, we've got wetter roads, slippier roads. As we then head into the warmer months, into the summer, I'm then looking at racing, and I want a faster tire, something with less roll resistance. Now before we even look into different tire treads and different rubber compounds, let's actually look through the different tire options for you. So there's three main options here. We've got clincher, tubular and tubeless. Now the most common choice is still today probably the clincher tire and that is simply because of its ease of use and its versatility. Now typically they have a wire or bead edge to them that slots into very firmly and securely into the inside rim of the wheel and then with inside that tire you then have an inner tube that should you get a puncture you can quite easily just whip the tire off take that inner tube out and put a new one in or fix that inner tube and put that back in so it really is quite handy very easy to use and also actually shares a lot of performance benefits that you find in some of the other options which moves us on to the tubular option which is more commonly used for racing and more so actually in the past the last decade or so ago and that is because they are lighter and they have a lower rolling resistance Resistance. Now they're essentially one single tube and they have their inner tube sewed into them. Now that means that then to pry it onto your wheel you actually have to either tape it onto the rim or glue it onto the rim which makes it a little bit tricky and should you get a puncture well again can be a little bit more problematic to get that one fixed. And then we have the tubeless tyre which shares many of the same properties of the clincher tyre they look very similar except they have a far tighter fitting to the inside rim profile of the wheel. And that means that then, as the name suggests, they are tubeless. There's no inner tube that's needed to go inside these, although most of them can run that as well. So once you've fitted this tubeless tire to the wheel, you then squirt some tubeless sealant into the tire, and then that works to plug any small holes or tears to the tire on the go. So hopefully you don't need to stop, it just plugs it as you go. You lose very minimal pressure as it's doing that. The only thing maybe to be wary of with these is because it's so much tighter on the inside rim of the wheel, they can be quite tricky to fit. We're now moving on to tyre size choice. And of course, we've got so many options here, but the three main ones have to be 23C, 25C, and 28C. Now the C refers to essentially millimeters. So the width of the tire when it's installed, which is measured at the widest point. Now the 23C tire used to be the most popular option, particularly amongst racing, because it was thought to be the faster tire, it would cut through the wind. But more recently, the 25C has taken over and definitely the more popular tire. Oddly, and this may sound strange, it has a shorter but wider contact area of the ground, which actually results in a lower rolling resistance. So a faster tire, 
for less effort whilst actually increasing the grip. It may result in a higher aerodynamic drag, but that said, with its increased popularity, more wheels are actually being designed specifically for use with 25C tyres. Actually, we're seeing a better aerodynamic drag with those tyres. We also have the wider 28C tyre. Again, we're going bigger again. It has a wider contact area again, which actually can result in a lower rolling resistance with some tyres and increased grip. We are seeing more of an aerodynamic penalty with these kind of tyres. So we don't typically see these on racing bikes or particularly on the front wheel, but we are seeing them more and more on the rear wheels as I've got on my bike here because it is less of a penalty back here. But as I've said, it increases grip and it's out of the airflow so much. So before you go buying a new tire, it is worth checking the wheel manufacturer's suggestions. So the wheels that you have on your bike because they may suggest a certain tire size for that size of rim, the type of wheel that you're using. For instance, a wider tire on a narrow rim may end up distorted, it may end up giving you more of an aerodynamic drag. I know this is incredibly confusing, but it is worth checking to make sure that you get it just right. We're now on to grip, and what determines the amount of grip that a tyre has? Well, out on the road, contrary to popular belief, the tread on a tyre actually has very little impact on our grip on the road. That's because the road is harder and tougher than the tyre, so the tyre can't really make an imprint on the road. It actually comes down mostly to the tyre compound, the rubber compound of that tyre. And the softer that compound, the more grip it has. However, you probably guessed it, the softer the compound, the less puncture resistant it is. Therefore, the harder the compound, the more puncture resistant, but the less grip. It gets quite tricky, I know. However, if you are willing to spend a little bit more money, there are some tyres that go some way to actually trying to achieve both to a degree. And one of those, and a very popular one, is the Continental Grand Prix Four Season Tyre. It's a tyre that I've used loads over the years. It's reinforced with high-tech fibres through the rubber, as well as reinforced um, sidewalls, which mean that they're very puncture resistant, as well as having good grip, particularly good for the winter seasons. Another way of finding grip is actually by running your tyres at a lower pressure. This is obviously going to increase the rolling resistance because it is increasing the contact patch with the ground so much more. And I'll be honest, I've been there during really bad weather or I've been out on a ride and seen that the roads are really quite greasy. I actually let a little bit more pressure out of my tyres. The only issue there is you let so much out that you end up running the risk of getting a pinch flat with the inner tube in that tyre. But that's actually one of the big benefits to tubeless tyres because of course there isn't an inner tube in there so you can actually run them at a lower pressure without having to worry about a pinch flat. Then as we move into summer and perhaps racing starts up again, then potentially rolling resistance becomes higher on our priorities. Now, rolling resistance is primarily dictated by the width of the tire, the treads of the tire, and also the compounds of the tire. Now we've already covered that the wider tires generally have lower rolling resistance than the narrower tires. Also with the tread on the tire, Typically, the smoother the tyre, the less rolling resistance than the heavily treaded tyres. But then it's interesting when we get to the compound because actually the tyres with a softer compound that are more flexible actually have lower rolling resistance than those that are actually less flexible and of a harder compound. Now, there's so much to discuss here, but essentially the harder compounds almost like bounce along the road, any rivet or bump in the road, whereas the softer, more flexible compounds conform, deform with the those rivets and bumps in the road, which actually reduces the amount of energy lost also whilst increasing the grip because they're staying on the road that bit more. Hopefully you're still with me there. So essentially what you're looking for is a tyre that is smooth, maybe slightly wider around 25C, but also a softer compound. That's where something like the Vittoria Corsa Speed comes in. It's a perfect tyre. It's a nice smooth finish to it, soft compound. And also if you want to get that in something like a 25mm, that's perfect. There are also obviously tyres out there that claim to do all of it as well as possible. And the Continental Grand Prix 5000 is a good example of that. It's got low rolling resistance, it's got a low aerodynamic drag, but also highly puncture resistant. Finally, a couple more points before we round out this video. I've obviously discussed the fact that the tread patterns have very little impact on the amount of grip that we have on the road, but actually this increased tread 
can make a tire more durable and more punch resistant because there is more material on the tire. So if you're looking for a long lasting hard wearing tire, perhaps as a commuter, you're going on varying terrains, then that might be a good option for you to have a look into that. Finally though, if you are using an on wheel turbo trainer, so you're putting the back wheel, the back tire directly onto the roller of the turbo, then do be wary because actually where you're in that fixed position and it heats up, you can actually wear out the tire, this kind of bold patch throughout the tire all the way around. And particularly with these softer compound tires, you'll wear through them really quickly. So you can end up with this flat patch that's obviously going to reduce grip out on the road. It's gonna feel really odd and also make it less puncture resistant. You can actually get turbo specific tires, which you can swap in and out. Obviously that's a bit of a hack. If you can actually get yourself a spare cheap wheel that you swap in and out that has a turbo ready tire already installed on it. So there we go, there is a lot to cover there. Obviously do get involved in the comments section below if you've got any questions, I'll do our best to get back to you. Um, I've got to say the Grand Prix 5000 tire has been a godsend for me. I find it a good all rounder. Although as I've mentioned, I do like that four season tiles, pop that in over the winter and maybe slightly wider width. Um, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a like. Don't forget to give us a follow over on social media and give us a subscribe just down below.